Multia is not just about launching from the learning platform to the tool. It's about the learning platform also exposing service APIs to the tool. And for example, an important one is the ability to post scores. So now those services need to be secured. And that's what we're going to cover in this video. So here, LTI uses uh, established standards for API protection. That means uh, service APIs in LTI are protected using OAuth 2 access token. Now there is a bit of variety in the area of how access tokens could be used. And so we'll see here in this video what is uh, LTI prescribing for that. So when making an API call, the request contains an authorization header with an access token. The platform will then validate a request with this token can execute the API call. When access tokens in LTI are obtained using a client credentials grant. So with client credentials, the learning platform grants a tool to execute operations. For example, the platform will grant a tool the right to post scores. Individual platform users are not prompted to give the permission on a per activity or per course basis. So the user will not see a pop-up like, do you grant these tools the right to report scores in your course? With client credentials grants, therefore a single token can be used to sync scores across courses. You don't need to ask a token on per course or per user basis. Now, how does the tool get the token? Well, it asks for a token uh, using the uh, token endpoint exposed by the platform. And that token endpoint is communicated to the tool during registration. So how, do, how does it identify itself and express what it wants to use a token for? Well, for that, LTI uses a JOT profile for authentication. So here we see a request the tool would uh, make, typically make to, um, to the platform to get an access token. And what we see here is that the client accession type is actually JOT bearer. So the bearer of a JOT. A JOT will be used to authentify uh, the tool. So let's look at the client accession, which is a JOT. So uh, let's decode it and see what's inside it. So what we see here is that the key elements are the ISS, the audience, and the sub. So the ISS here is the one issuing the token. And well, the one issuing the token in this case is the tool. And the identity of the tool as known by the platform is the client ID of the tool. Therefore, the ISS here must be the tool client ID. The audience is the learning platform token endpoint. And the platform should reject any request made uh, to an audience that is not the token endpoint that it exposes. Then the subject is who this token is for. Well, here we are in the case of a client grant. Therefore, the tool is asking a token to act on its own behalf. Therefore, the subject is the tool. And so we put the tool client ID again here. Well, then all that goes to become a signed JOT, signed with the tool private key. By sending it with the tool private key, the tool is asserting it is the one that crafted the JOT. When the platform receives a request, it will verify the JOT by using the public key associated with that client ID. Now, what kind of operation should this token be granted for? Well, that is expressed in OAuth 2 using scopes. And so here, uh, each LTI services define its own set of scopes. And the tool must require, when it makes a request for a token, to require at least one scope. No scope means uh, the token will not be granted to do anything and not everything. So it's important here. You must always specify at least one scope. LTI scopes uh, in the context of LTI are fully qualified URIs to avoid any collision with pre-existing scopes. So, but they look like URIs, but really you should treat them as strings, long strings. If all is OK, then a token is returned. And there is a bit more data about that token. Uh, so for example, there is what kind of scopes that were actually granted uh, to that token, because you may ask for a set of scopes or permissions, and the platform may actually just give you a, a smaller set of those. So you should always verify what were actually uh, the granted scopes you, you got for that token. And then the token is valid for a given amount of time. So the metadata here expires and will tell you for how long this token will be valid for. So as we mentioned before, since this is a client grant, now you can use this token to perform the uh, operations granted by the scopes across the full platform. So for example, you could, if you were asking to get uh, the roster of a course, you could theoretically use that token to request the roster on any course. Well, obviously that seems a bit overly permissive. And this is why platforms will typically enforce additional contextual restrictions on the operation. So for example, a platform may grant a tool uh, the right to ask for a course roster, but it will prevent the uh, tool to actually ask for the roster in a course where the tool is not used. That would be uh, one example of uh, additional restrictions enforced by the platform. 
And so also platforms may expose their own set of services and therefore their own scopes and possibly blend LTI services and platform specific services together through uh, a single uh, authorization endpoint. So therefore you could ask a token to do platform and LTI uh, services at the same time. Again, that would be platform specific. So that's it for the uh, LTI API security and we'll cover in the next videos the actual services that are using this. Thank you.